So Daryl Morey had an interview on 97.5 today with John Kincaid. Seems he has had a change of heart all offseason. The Sixers were promoting this cap space for 2024 plan, but today he got asked about the team's outlook heading into the trade deadline this season, and he stated, We feel very good where we are at. We're not complacent. We know we need to keep playing better, keep improving, hopefully add someone that may be significant as well with all the draft picks we have now. And we do feel like this is the year we need to focus on. We don't take it for granted this year is a super important year. Now, Trill Bro Dude on Twitter from the You Know Ball podcast tweeted a screenshot of his Discord where a user Aaron Sniper stated that Maury mentioned Embiid, Maxi Batum, and Oubre. In my opinion, that is a good indication that those players are untouchable. And guess who was left off that list? Crumble Cookie Man himself, Tobias Harris. I feel like in all the Maury's interviews before this interview, he's always talking about Tobias. So maybe, just maybe, he's finally seen the light. I would also like to share another Trill Bro Dude tweet. Because he makes a great point. I have to remind people this every year, but expiring salaries are extremely easy to trade at the deadline. Usually, you only have to include a pick if you're getting back a good player or a few rotation players like the Lakers did with Westbrook last year. You do not need to pay to get off expiring contracts. That's not how it works. Now, most likely, the Sixers will be attaching picks in any Tobias deal, multiple picks probably, because I don't see Maury just accepting better-fitting role players type of deal, such as, I don't know, Gordon Hayward and Cody Martin for Tobias. Based on Maury's track record, it's probably going to be for a bigger fish such as OG, Zach Levine, Siakam, or maybe even Laurie Markkinen. According to that same user, Maury also emphasized smart offensive players in Nurse's system with zero mention of defense at all. Now, all the players I mentioned above, I'd say Zach Levine is the most likely candidate. Siakam will be available, but there has been zero rumors of him being a candidate for the Sixers. OG and Markinen, the Sixers would certainly have interest in, and I believe they would go all out for either of those two. But unfortunately, I would say there is 0% chance. It's pretty clear Toronto wants to sign OG long-term as he fits perfectly next to Scotty Barnes. And Laurie Markinen is only 26 on a great contract. They have other movable pieces on that team that I think will be the focus for them during the trade deadline. So just doing the simple mathematics, if the Sixers make a splash to add someone significant, like Maury said, it's probably Zach Levine and someone else. And that someone else is the main reason I see Maury having real interest in Levine. I believe he won't go through any deal with Zach Levine unless Alex Caruso is involved. And honestly, I think every GM will operate that way and should simply because Zach Levine's market right now is very, very dry because around the league, that contract is viewed as a bad contract. And on December 1st, Woj appeared on NBA Today and stated there is no market for Zach Levine right now. The injuries for him are piling up over the years and he's set to make $48 million a year in 2026. And quite honestly, guys like Buddy Heald, and both Bogdanovich's from the Hawks and the Pistons bring 65% of what he brings offensively on a much cheaper contract. Meanwhile, Alex Caruso's market is beaming. That contract is viewed as one of the best in the league. $9.4 million this year. It goes up to $9.8 million next season. To put that in perspective, Marcus Smart, a guy who brings the same type of impact as Caruso, is making $18.8 million. So any GM who is smart ain't taking on that Levine contract without Caruso attached, in my opinion. I tweeted about Levine only getting dealt if Caruso is attached, and my guy Shamir Devine responded with a great point. It's the only way for a team to justify giving up draft capital, and the only way the Bulls will get anything valuable. I think there's multiple ways the deal could get done. If the Bulls want the heart of the deal to be around valuable picks as valuable as possible, I see the offer being Tobias Ferk, Springer, KJ Martin with multiple first rounders and swaps. If they want more valuable players than valuable picks, I see it being Tobias, Melton, Springer, 
and less valued first round picks. If they want a young player centric package, it could be Paul Reed, Springer, Tobias, KJ Martin, first round picks, but this time the Sixers get back Drummond as well. I think the Sixers should do all they can to not trade away that 2028 Clippers first round pick. Other than that, I don't really have any other crazy attachments to our picks, to be honest with you. Where I stand personally is I just want Alex Caruso. (laughs) I'm going to be straight up with you because Nick Batum and Caruso as connectors, I mean, their IQ will just be a joy to watch and will elevate every lineup they're in. I think the Sixers should also try to move Marcus Morris and second round picks for Doug McDermott. He's currently top five in three point percentage and should be easy to get considering he's expiring. Let's get ourselves another Marco Bellinelli because why not? And looking at that team, it ain't that bad. I mean, I think the Sixers can truly make an impact come playoff time if healthy with that roster. I'm not a hundred percent in on Zach Levine. But I think it becomes way easier for me to become a Zach Levine lover if Alex Caruso is involved in the deal. And honestly, there should be no deal for the Sixers unless Alex Caruso is involved for Zach Levine. It's it's that plain and simple. 